If you think to yourself, you have to take images into Photoshop in order to do local adjustments like some skin smoothing or brightening one little area, you're wrong. There's so much power in Lightroom and I'm gonna show you how to do this in case you've never utilized this part of Lightroom before. Hey there, I'm Caitlin. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This is a place where we love to empower photographers to build both profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in the behind the scenes of our everyday life. And what I'm gonna do today is talk to you about the brushes option in Lightroom. This option has come a long way. When I first started using Lightroom years ago, like a decade ago, the brushes feature was just not powerful. It was kind of a mess. You couldn't control it really well. It has come so far. And I will tell you, I have so many people who uh, maybe invest in our preset process and they email and they're like, I have to take every single image into Lightroom because I photograph seniors or I'm smoothing baby skin for newborn portraits or I have wedding clients that have to have smoother skin and I, I just have to do it in Photoshop. And the truth is that's not the case anymore. And so if you've never utilized this tool in Lightroom, I wanna help you do that. I'm gonna show you how I use brushes in Lightroom. I'm gonna break down some key ways that you can use it as well. All right, so we are in Lightroom and we are in the develop tab right up here. And when you are going to open up your brushes, you have to click right here. All right, so basically once you click the brush, once you open up this panel, you can see the little word effect right there. You have to make sure that you're clicking there to see your brush options, um, but you don't have to. If you're coming into this and you're just saying, okay, I just wanna brighten a little area, you don't have to click here to get an effect. You literally could just increase your exposure. Um, anything that you adjust in this tab, as far as settings go, it's going to apply that edit wherever you paint your paintbrush, okay? And so you could, you could brighten it, you could warm up just one little area, you could control the highlights in one little area, you, you, could, you can control the hue of one little area. I've actually done that before, where I've just changed one person's face to have a little bit more magenta than, than green. So there's a lot that you can do with this option. And the, the, the options are endless, right? So let's talk really quickly about what your brush options are. So that was the effects. I'm talking about the effects you could do, anything in this panel. Um, but then when it comes to your brush options here, you can change the size of your brush, all right? So um, your brush can get bigger or smaller. You can change the amount of feathering. And so that's gonna change how hard or soft the stop to the effect is on the edge of your brush. So let's say that you are applying some skin smoothing and you want to have a hard line at the, you don't want it to be something that like fades into like off the shoulder. Um, you might wanna to tone down that feather, that feathering a bit down to like, you know, the 20 to 30 range. I tend to keep mine in like the 80 to 70 range um, as long as I don't need a really hard stop to the edge of where I'm applying it. Uh, and then the flow is how consistent the edit is applied as you're painting. And I always keep that around 100 just because I think it's a little frustrating, for me at least, not for everybody, sometimes it's a little frustrating to control that when your flow is fluctuating. So once you decide what you want to apply to your image, you can start painting it on the image so you can see actually where the effect is taking place um, as you're doing it, or you can click O and that's gonna allow you to see kind of a mask overlay of where your edit has been applied. And now that red is not gonna be applied to your image, it's just a way to gauge where you're actually applying the edit. Um, I tend to prefer, especially in this newer update of Lightroom, I think it's really accurate and smooth the way that it shows you the edit while you're doing it, I like that. Um, but some, some people really prefer to see uh, the red in a situation where um, you're trying to be a little bit more specific. So now another mask option that you may love is selecting auto mask. And auto mask is found in the brush option section. Um, and if you click that, what's gonna happen is Lightroom is actually helping analyze the image and figuring out, okay, I think they're probably just trying to edit the skin here, so I'm not gonna let the edit overflow into the hairline. So if you see here, you can see where it's applying to the skin, but it's not going into her hair, even though I have feathering cranked up quite a bit. Um, and so auto mask is great. I would say it's one of the best features that's been improved in Lightroom recently. Older versions were horrible at this, in, in my opinion. So I think that's I think it's come a long way and I use it quite often when I am trying to smooth out some skin. So one of the most common things that I use the adjustment brushes for is skin smoothing. I used to take people into Photoshop if they had a really strong need for skin smoothing, I, there's no need for me to do that anymore. So I'm gonna show you how I would apply it to this image. Now, this bride, I literally had people say to me on some of my DMs, like, that's one of the most beautiful brides you've ever worked with. I would say they are they are accurate. Shannon's gorgeous. 
I love getting to photograph her. Um, she actually does not have a skin issue. I am going to just smooth out. Um, it was a really tight bridal portrait, so I'm going to smooth out some pores. I'm also going to smooth out some of the harsh light. It was a really tricky getting ready location. And I'm going to do that through my skin smoothing brush. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. Well, that's a little too far. And I'm just smoothing out wherever the brush is touching. I'm going to make the brush a little smaller over here. All right, and if I click O, you can see where it applied, um, but I like seeing the actual edit being applied. And you zoom out, it just smooths the skin. It gives this really soft look and it's really effective. Now, if you were editing something like this and you think, well, Caitlin, I really love that, but I almost think it's a little too much. Like I almost feel like it's a little bit too intense of a skin smoother. You have the ability to change any of that. I just made my own skin smoothing brush. And so I know that if I want it to look less uh, intense, all I have to do is adjust how much the clarity is reduced and how much the texture is reduced. Um, and I can make all those adjustments quickly, easily, and I have full control over how my brushes are affecting my images. All right, so now let's say you wanna apply a secondary edit. So you wanna do a different brush stroke affecting something different on the image, you can do that by just simply coming up here and selecting new. And so you're gonna see this little dot appear. And that is basically like a little pin that shows you where a certain edit was applied. And you can always select that again and make some adjustments. So you can select it and be like, okay, I actually wanna brighten that area as well. Or I actually want to desaturate that area as well. Um, so once you click, once you click new, you're kind of free to start brand new, all right? It's not connected to that past pinned area. You're doing a brand new edit. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna make um, my brush just a little bit sharper, maybe a little pop of contrast for the eyes. I don't normally edit eyes like this at all, but it's just to show you a different example. Um, and I can apply this just to the eyes. All right, and then if I clicked new again, now I would have two pins, and those are just different areas where I could go back and make ad adjustments. Now, I would never do anything crazy, like really increase the saturation of her eyes um, because it would start to look a little unrealistic. Uh, but this is really important for someone who is doing, maybe you're a senior photographer, maybe you are a wedding photographer and you're doing some bridal portraits and you have some intense edits you need to make to the skin. You need to know how to do a lot of different pins or a lot of different areas of the image that need specific attention in a different way. So it's important to know how to manage that and control it. So that's a great example of using it for skin smoothing, but there's so many different ways that you can apply local adjustment brush edits when you're in Lightroom. And so it's not just for smoothing skin. Some of the common ways that I use this tool would be, um, I, I like to brighten like nuzzle poses. So I literally have a nuzzle brush where basically what I'm doing is I'm brightening the shadows a little bit, brightening the exposure a little bit, decreasing the blacks a little bit. I'm taking out the heaviness and darkness of a pose. Like if a guy is has his nose right against the girl and his face looks more shadowy, I can take away some of that heaviness with a simple brush stroke. And so it could also be that maybe you are shooting in the middle of the day and there's a blue like highlight happening on the top of like the guy's hair or the bride's, you know, maybe she has a really tight bun and like the sleekness of her hair is reflecting blue. You can get rid of like that weird blue tone just on the top of the hair. You can actually um, edit out some of like the green skin tones you might see underneath someone's chin if you're shooting in a really green, bright location. Um, there's so much you can do once you start utilizing the power of this panel. You'll start to notice patterns that you're doing over and over again. And you can start to actually create your own presets so you don't have to make all these adjustments. You just click your own brush and do that edit. You can do that or I include some of my brushes in the KJ preset process. So this is a great tool to learn in Lightroom because all of a sudden those images that you feel like, man, that just, that one little thing needs to be tweaked. Now you have the power to do it without ever leaving this program. So let's just say if someone says, why not go into Photoshop? Here are some reasons why. First of all, the way that Lightroom is set up is that you can always come back and click exactly where these adjustments are and make edits. Whereas in Photoshop, depending on how you did layers or how you saved your file, you're, a lot of people will lose that. If you save it as a JPEG and bring it back into Lightroom, you, you lose a lot of those edits. And so if you are using Photoshop, you also really have to know Photoshop in order to have some of these tools that Lightroom makes so easily and automated. Like if you want to do intense skin smoothing and just the clarity and the texture and like all those things can be done in Photoshop, but you really got to know Photoshop to be able to find those options, or you have to have actions that help you make those options um, possible. So it, there's, there's, 
not really, in my opinion, there's not a lot of pros to taking into Photoshop, except that it used to be that Photoshop was a hundred times more accurate. Well, now that Lightroom has come a long way, it doesn't make much sense to me why you would take something into Photoshop to do what you could do now in Lightroom. All, all that to say though, however, disclaimer is I do, I do think you need to take things into Photoshop. If you have a serious like clone cloning out issue, like if you need to get something out and you need to clone it out, you need to stamp that I, you gotta, you gotta go into Photoshop. If it's intense, Lightroom is still not super accurate with that. There are ways to get rid of like, Oh, like a little water bottle on the ground. Like that's easy. But if we're, we're, we're cloning out something significant, Photoshop is way better, way more accurate and actually quicker, um, than trying to make the clone brush work in um, in Lightroom. So I hope this video was helpful, right? I haven't done anything quite like this. Uh, and I'm excited to share part of Lightroom that I don't talk about very often. If you are interested in learning how you can create more consistent images, more consistent edits, uh, within Lightroom with a process, not just a preset, you know, where you just click it and like one thing's applied and you just hope it looks right, but a four step system that allows you to find your style and find your consistent edit over and over again. The KJ preset process does just that. And as an added bonus, I include my brushes that I use every single time that I'm editing. That's a bonus that's included in the KJ preset process as well. There's more information linked below. I hope you'll check it out. Thank you for tuning in like, and subscribe. So you do not miss next week's video. It is a privilege to be able to teach you and help you learn and grow as you grow in your photography business. So enjoy this video and others that are to come. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.